This is breaking news. The Voice Playoffs Recap. Shocking Eliminations Cap. A night of mostly excellent performances. Monday's episode of The Voice turned Rebum Sentire and Snoop Dogg's swivel chairs into hot seats as they were called upon to cut their teams of five singers each to just two apiece. And no amount of guidance from advisors Lainey Wilson or Simone Biles would make their decisions any easier, or, in Snoop's case, make any more sense. Read on, and we'll discuss what went down. Adam Bohannon, I think I'm in love with you. Grade. A putting an Al Green-ish spin on Chris Stapleton's hit, Adam was casually cool, seemingly so comfortable, he could have been singing in the shower. And vocally, forget it, the dude couldn't hear bum note if you gave him a baseball bat in a room full of them. Edward Preble, all of me, grade. I love this kid and his rat pack skick. And here, he was not only in perfect voice, eat your heart out, Sinatra. He was looser on stage and more charismatic than we'd ever seen. As Michael put it when Edward was done, you're so cute, man. Utterly endearing. Katie O, hang tight, honey. Grade. A singing Laney's smash, Katie was a one-woman barn burner. So fired up, she reeled me right in. As you'd expect in the playoffs, her vocals were spot on to the point that she nailed the long note at the song's end that even Laney admitted gave her a hard time. Lauren Michael Sellers, I'm Motok, grade. I know y'all are going to say I gave out too many as again, but what was I supposed to do? Boom, boom, boom. These were stellar performances. Lauren Michaels' rendition of Jelly Roll's hit was raw, beautifully modulated, and downright inspiring. Danny Joseph, I heard it through the grapevine. Grade. B. Of all the people I expected might stumble in the playoffs. Danny was so low on the list that he almost wasn't on it. But his rockin' rendition of the Golden Oldie was less exciting than bewildering, leaving him coming off more like a parody than the star that he is. Christina Eagle. Fancy. Grade. Although the country singer's cover of Queen Reba's classic didn't hold a candle to the original, I couldn't find any technical fault with it. Christina's performance was well modulated and dramatic, and I challenge anyone to say that the kid didn't leave all she had on that stage. Aaliyah Kalin, I have nothing. Grade. A plus give me a shoe to throw Jennifer Hudson style. This was bleeping incredible. Before Aaliyah started, I wondered if her voice was going to be able to go big enough to do Whitney Houston's smash justice. Aaliyah's answer wasn't just yes, it was hell, yes, stunning. Austin Stunsel, a door, grade. A plus, I don't have three words to describe Austin's performance. I have three letters, OMG. How is it even possible that he sang a Prince number as magnificently as Prince himself? The falsetto, the audience interaction, and holy crap, that incredible shriek at the end. Blown away. Michaela Ayura. Love. Grade. A. On Keisha Cole's ballad, Michaela sounded perfectly lovely. And man, she had some fun with those runs. The trouble for the 17-year-old seemed likely to be that her number wasn't nearly as showy and exciting as Aaliyah and Austin's were. Michaela was good. They were great. Jeremy Belot. The Impossible Dream. The Quest. Grade. A plus you know Jeremy had to be freaking incredible. If he made me overlook the fact that he performed in leather gloves, like he was on his way to commit a cat burglary after the show. He was so vulnerable, and his vocal, so powerful, even my goosebumps had goosebumps. Man, and I thought Gwen Stefani's picks last week were shocking. I can see where Rebo would keep Danny even after he had an off night. But WTH was Snoop smoking to pick Christina over Aaliyah and Austin's. Going with Jeremy, I and my goosebumps understood. But choosing a dime a dozen country singer over contestants who just slayed Whitney and Prince, respectively, the gangster Holy Ghost really let him down this time.